Don't know what to do after you take your MCAT? How do you stand out when you're feeling a little bit behind already? By the end of this video, I will share a game plan, your next steps on what to do so that you can start crafting a stellar application. This is Ali. He received 11 interviews, six acceptances, and he at first felt very defeated about the MCAT. Didn't know if he was gonna have a chance to even really you know, stand out. And it was crafting his story that opened his doors, not necessarily his stats. MCAT is important, vital even, but it's one part of the comprehensive story that you can tell. If you want to learn about how I work with students, grab your spot on my calendar and we can start chatting and see if we're a good fit. All right, let's get started. First things first, take a moment to celebrate. Enjoy the milestones as you go, right? So the MCAT, studying for the MCAT preparing takes a toll. Celebrate that you have kind of that in the rear view mirror and you deserve that acknowledgement and achievement. But I would say don't rest for too long, right? So you wanna get started on your application materials as fast as possible. Whether that is starting notes in a Google Doc or in your notes um, kind of app on your phone, you want to start really thinking about your writing materials. Before you do that, though, I would reflect on the MCAT. Were there any sections that were like really difficult for you? Was there something that you really thrived in? In case there is any shot that you may take it again, you want to kind of have this intel fresh from um, the wound, right? From I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Fresh from taking it. All right, so now we start with step two, which is really step one, starting to write your primary materials, which I would begin with a personal statement. You wanna give yourself plenty of time to craft your personal statement, and this is probably the one piece of text that takes the longest, so you wanna kinda of give yourself that time. Ideally, you should begin brainstorming and outlining as soon as possible, straight after the, the MCAT, take a week, two weeks off, and then kinda of start. And I have so many videos, I can link them above, on how to structure the, the personal statement, but we will talk a little bit about that now too. So you wanna give yourself that time because you wanna kinda of linger on your messaging and thinking about kind of how each story, each experience is advancing your why medicine. And then you can think about structure and then you can think about whether you're applying to MD and DO or just MD potentially kind of the DO version if you apply to both would have a different ending or would have a different patient story. So there are so many moving parts that you want to kind of emphasize certain things, right? For MD, it's your evidence-based medicine, scientific inquiry, your interest in working with a team that can still be available and present in your DO personal statement. But those are things potentially you're highlighting, right? Through your story specifically. My kind of bread and butter for me, king or queen in these essays are patient-centric stories, especially ones that show you in action and adapting and serving a patient, so meeting them at their level of need, right? So that is for MD and DO. I always tell my students that you craft one first, whether it's MD or DO, personal statement, and then you use that to adapt to let's say, so if you craft the MD one, then you kind of can look at it and measure what places you wanna kind of bring in a more DO-centric, osteopathic kind of content, right? Whether that's swapping out an entire paragraph or just really kind of in your takeaways, giving a different slant. You could be thinking about, have you seen osteopathic OMT, osteopathic manipulative treatment? Um, have you shadowed a DO, worked with a DO before? So those are potentially the stories that you could be highlighting in your DO personal statement. So here are kind of general writing tips. First and foremost, show don't tell. You wanna use your five senses. You wanna describe when you're telling a story, which is really an anecdote, you wanna describe it as if you have a camera over your shoulders. I wanna see, hear, taste, touch, whatever appropriate. So I really kind of plunge into the information and um, kind of I'm there with you as a reader. So these anecdotes, the ones that you select for your personal statement, and we can talk about activities and how stories are there too, these should illustrate the qualities and attributes you want to kind of show. They should be emblematic of who you are, your values, why you come to medicine specifically. And so working with coaches like me, you could really kind of bring out your message, fine tune your language, your verbiage, your phrasing, so what you're saying, how you're saying it, and really kind of advance your why medicine in almost every sentence. You wanna be very efficient with your storytelling. Once you have a working draft for your personal statement, revise, 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 right? Come back to it a few times. Get feedback from a mentor, advisors, a fellow student, what I, coaches like me, right? So you really wanna work with someone, partner with someone ideally, that will elevate your message, will share kind of tips and help you really fine tune wording and phrasing and not only what you're saying, but how you're saying it. For the activity section, we wanna really think about a few things. So 
diversity of experiences. You want to include a variety of experiences that showcase your different aspects of your medical journey, right? So research, volunteer work, leadership roles, unique roles in school, talent, hobbies. You really want to kind of show how you contributed. So how did you make an impact or how did that experience impact you? So how did you contribute to the organization that you were a part of? How did your role impact the kind of broader dynamic and environment that you were in? You're not going to answer all of these questions for each and every 700 character or 600 characters for DO, but you want to kind of think about how answering different questions will maximize that specific activity. So you want to be clear and concise. You have limited characters, like I said, 700 characters for the MD, 600 characters for DO, but you are prioritizing those most significant experiences. Again, how did you, so when in doubt, what do I say? What do I focus on? You want to kind of lean back into how did you either make an impact or how did the experience impact you and your journey to medicine? You want to kind of have active words, collaborated, led, directed, initiated, and then kind of think about if you are overwhelmed with your primary application and you wanna chat about kind of next steps and what you should be doing, how I fit into that kind of formula for students, grab your spot on my calendar and we can chat for free. Um, and the calendar link is below. So step three, once you have your primary application written, you wanna get started pre-writing those secondaries. Those will come fast and furious once your application is verified, right? So you wanna make sure that you are pre-writing certain kind of like high ticket ones or high currency ones. Yes, take a break. You know, writing kind of the primary, I get it, take a week off, but then get started, right? So many schools ask a certain kind of similar questions and the detail or the kind of way you stand out is by particularizing your answer to their specific version of that question. So how do I approach pre-writing secondaries with students? You wanna research school specific um, prompts, right? So there are a couple of websites you can do that and you can kind of see from the last few cycles what they've been asking. For the why us, which is research heavy, you wanna think about the school mission. How do your experiences thus far align with their values and their goals? You want to then have this template. Ideally you write the first one that's the longest one, the why us, and then you kind of like adapt it and tailor it to reuse it to other schools. But you're not only swapping out classes, you want to really think about their mission, think about what you're kind of coming into from an environment perspective and a values perspective and really kind of particularize it in that way. Once you start having five, six, seven essays that you can reuse and recycle, then the secondaries become manageable, dare I say, even enjoyable sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, so timeline. Here's a timeline kind of rough of, um, for kind of applications, right? And this is ideal, but you know, we can move it around. So November to March, you're reflecting on your MCAT score. You are finalizing your school list. You are starting to brainstorm and draft your personal statement, right? I start my program October 1st for those kind of early birds that really want to get started early. From March to May, fine, a little bit in June, you are finalizing your personal statement. Ideally, you know, rolling admission, you are getting it in you're submitting the primary application when it opens, right? And so MCAS, a Comus application open, you know, the next day you are submitting it. So early is key. And then you start researching. You start researching those school prompts and you start kind of organizing them. The rest of the summer, start pre-writing those secondaries because they will come fast and furious. So my, you know, happiest students are the students that wrote, kind of pre-wrote a few of their schools in June. And then by July that they started getting their um, secondaries, they were good to go. August to September, you want to stay on top of the secondary essays, right? You're always going to have content that you need to kind of completely write from scratch or that you need to kind of adapt in a different way that will take a little bit. You want to kind of goal is to have turnaround of 10 to 14 days, right? You receive a secondary two weeks or less, they are out the door and you're submitting them. And then after that, kind of like, you know, August, September, you are prepping interviews as well, because those sometimes will come fast and they'll be like, can you interview in four days? And others will be like, can you interview two months from now? So you really want to start practicing those MMI questions, practicing those traditional high ticket, high currency interview questions, and really be ready. I have students interviewing as early as middle of August, right? So you have to really kind of be prepared for that. This is your story, but you want it to be kind of thoughtful in the way you deliver all aspects of your story written and when you kind of you know interview so if you want more information on how i work with students if you want to learn more about kind of how i offer personalized feedback how i work with students to build your essay to build all of your writing material and your messaging schedule your call we can start chatting we can see if we are a good fit and i'll see you on the next one thank you so much for stopping by have a good one